say it's similar to a piano accordion, only much better. This thing, you, you sit on your lap, you can't see your hands. It's the six inches between your ears and your heart that makes it work. It's like comparing a violin to a guitar. They're both string instruments, but they're totally different. The only thing that a concertina and a piano accordion have are the reeds and the bellows. And the bellows uh, operate the wind in order to make the reeds respond. A piano accordion, it's the same sound whether you push or pull the bellows. Same sound. On a concertina, each button has two tones like a harmonica. Notice there are numbers above the notes. And that's how we play. We play by number. So there's somewhat more uh, difficulty uh, in playing the concertina versus uh, the uh, piano accordion. But they definitely have a very distinct sound. I was about probably uh, 10 years old and I remember a next door neighbor grinding away in the upstairs bedroom. It was a hundred above and it just grind and grind and grind, you know. I was too young to appreciate the hours that he put in at that time. <clears throat> but after I went over to his house and listened to him play, I says, now I can see that the reward he got out of, out of putting all that hours of practice in. And then when I got, uh, I got involved in the instrument wanting to learn how to play, and so I contacted, uh, uh, his name is uh, Donald Joswick, and uh, I talked to Don, I says, uh, would you be interested in giving me lessons? And he says, uh, yeah, I, I'll give you lessons. A friend of mine's brother got married, and he says, would you mind getting a couple of guys and playing? And it was over on Dale and Thomas underneath a uh, uh, bakery, and... Uh, and that was where uh, where I played my, my first first gig that I, in the world is, um, you no longer are an amateur. If you got paid, you're now a professional. <laughs> so I built my first concertine. I finished it in 1989. Well, I got started because I was a tool maker. I was a plastic and die casting bowl maker. And uh, there was a fellow in Minneapolis that uh, he was he was doing some building. And uh, he was a good repair man and just uh, very knowledgeable. So I got to know him, and I'd go over there and visit. And then, you know, someplace along the line, I said, "Well, I'd probably like to make a few." So we started uh, importing the reeds from Italy. It, it's it's strictly a hobby. This is not a a business. This is something that I enjoy doing. We use basswood because it's light and it's strong. We try to make the instrument as light as possible because it just it just makes it easier to play. You know, you start adding up the cabinets, the, the covering, the engraving, the tuning, the bellows. Um, it, it that's where it, it it all adds up, and that pretty soon you you've got uh, some real uh, dollars involved in in just in the the uh, basic uh, parts of the instrument. Uh, around 10,000, yeah, yeah. I do the tuning using a Con Strobo tuner, and what I do is I have a tuning table here, and it plays the reed, and this tells me whether it's sharp or flat. There are 374 reeds in each instrument, and each one has to be put on pitch. Each one has to be put on pitch. So that takes the tuning probably uh, is probably a week. It's a good 40 hours alone just in, in, in the tuning. I'll tell you, seeing the finished product is really very, very rewarding. I've got 40 concertinas that were built and they are in nine different states. You know, there's a, a piece of me in each and every instrument and I'm, I'm no different than um, Jerry Minar or uh, Josh Selner over in Sleepy Eye. When we put we put a lot of time into these things and we want to make them as nice as they can. And that's good music can be played on that instrument. It isn't just polka waltz. 
the younger generation are missing it. First of all, uh, they they don't hold their their uh, their date's hand. They won't put their arms around them. It's a totally different way of, uh, of of dancing, you know. And it was it was really very enjoyable. The old time music is. Um, fading away. We certainly aren't going to change the next generation. Uh, they've got to find it. If they want it, it's there. Simple as that. They've got to find it.